we can see you, but you are still muted. There you go. Can you hear me? We can. Great. Can you see my slides? There we do. Awesome. Great. Hello, everybody. I'm Glenn Schrest. I'm leading the ORV3 BlindMate interface group. Uh, we're developing BlindMate components and interfaces for the new upcoming next generation open rack. And I'm a mechanical engineer at Facebook. Let me tell you a little bit about our group. Uh, we formed the group back in uh, late January of this year, uh, right before COVID. <laughs> um, and the group includes uh, liquid cooling component suppliers, solution providers, technical experts, ODMs, and end users. Initially, we were debating on having some of the areas we're working on separated and decided on combining it all together to have a more holistic approach. So we're developing specifications and interfaces for BlindMate liquid cooling solutions to be used in the Open Rack version three. We are authoring best practice white papers to help, help educate the community. And the diverse expertise and experiences of group members have been helpful in developing a direction and, and driving solutions. These are some of the companies that are involved. Uh, quite a good spread across the industry from component suppliers to end users to hyperscalers. So it's, it's a really good mix of people to get different perspectives when we're developing the solutions. What are we developing? Uh, a bunch of stuff here. Um, we actually have a reasonably large scope in the group. We have BlindMate quick connector interface specifications and components that we're developing. BlindMate manifold interface and design specifications. IT gear interface specifications and design concepts that we'll be sharing with the community at a later date. Uh, or, or three frame interfaces and structural enhancements, and I'll get into why structural enhancements are needed later. Manual couplings and hoses best practices white paper that we released earlier this year was one of our first ones that we did. Um, and then we just kicked off a logistics integration best practices white paper. Uh, BlindMate concept. So this is the, what we're working on. The BlindMate solution has manifolds installed at the rear, split at each corner, to maximize rear through access for things like fans and other modules. Manifolds will have the female quick connectors uh, threaded onto them. The IT gear will have a male quick uh, connector that's panel mounted and we'll show some, some examples of it later. The rack frame will have interfaces for the manifolds as well as the structural enhancements. And you can see one there, that bar kind of across the middle there as one of the examples. So for the BlindMate Quick Connectors, it's been a collaborative effort with suppliers sharing early concepts and determining the best direction. So it wasn't one person prescribing a direction, it was a completely group effort and uh, been really, really good actually. That whole early process was pretty amazing to see come, come about. Uh, we had feedback from manifold suppliers and users and ODMs during the process. So we had people that weren't designing the couplings help impact and improve the design as we developed these concepts. The specification will have enough detail to ensure interoperability between suppliers while leaving room for innovation and freedom in non-critical areas. This is actually a theme you're gonna see that frankly the suppliers have asked for it and rightfully so. Um, unique designs that accommodate large radial and angular misalignment and provide longer working range in the mate direction, otherwise known as stroke. And they're gonna be supplier interchangeable. And I will get to in a minute here why those um, unique requirements were needed. The male is a panel mounted design that is, has all of the floating features and you can see an example of it down there in the lower left. The female is fixed and mounted to the manifold with threaded. Uh, the target sizes that we're planning on developing are a three and a five millimeter design. The five millimeter design is the first one we're working on now. And the three millimeter will come along uh, later once we have the five millimeter design adequately defined. We, we wanna avoid um, kind of changing two things at once we want to have make the three for three millimeter much more straightforward. Uh, what drove us to this is unique design with a larger float and stroke? Well, the rack assembly itself has a, has a pretty large tolerance stack there from the frame, the manifolds, the IT gear, and all the gaps are designed in to ensure things can fit in the rack are pretty large. Um, we also designing this to be service optimized where we don't have manual connections, particularly folks with large scale deployments you wanna be able to get the gear in and out of the rack quickly without having as much uh, time to do so. And manual connections require that. Uh, desire to avoid side loads on quick connectors and manifolds. And what that means is when you're, if you can imagine you're shipping a rack full of heavy gear 
and you've got the shock and vibration going on while it's being shipped, we really want to avoid those loads creating damage to the valves, the threads, and which could lead to uh, latent issues like leaks and damage. Um, also, the deflections in the system due to the mate loads from the, from the quick connectors and fluid pressure requires the additional stroke. On the manifolds, uh, we have some unique tolerance requirements due to blind mate connections. They're much more challenging than typical manual designs. Location is very important and precision is very important. We will, in this effort, we will define key interfaces and features while allowing supplier freedom in non-critical areas and end user design needs. So for example, we're gonna define port geometry, we're gonna define the overall size, but we're not gonna tell people exactly where they have to put specific things like the inlet and outlet ports. A brief summary of areas we are focused on include pressure drop and performance targets, manufacturing tolerances, structural requirements due to the high mate loads, adapting to the blind mate QC requirements, particularly in the port area in the spot face, service access, and something that kind of came along more recently is we're trying to develop a modular purge service port concept so that those can be uh, basically interchangeable and removed as needed. So another part of what we're working on is an IT gear concepts and interfaces. So the team worked real closely on developing IT gear design concepts. Design is unique from standard IT gear in some pretty cool ways here. Uh, we have a modular QC mounting module. Uh, you can kind of make it out there behind the red and green ports there, uh, the valves, excuse me, and that picture in the lower right. Um, the ejectors feature long stroke to minimize user insulation. And that's needed because these valves have fairly long working range to deal with these issues I mentioned earlier. And one of the more unique things that we try to do is we're incorporating a concept to reduce the springback force from the ejectors during extraction. We don't want the pressures from the valves and the manifolds resulting in, you know, your knuckles getting smashed from that force trying to push, uh, remove the gear. On the rack frame, uh, the team's collaborating on developing mounting interfaces and structural enhancements. Uh, optimizing existing features to add manifold interfaces. In other words, trying not to add too many extra pieces to the rack, rather adapting a, existing pieces as much as possible. Um, in, in the, it was input from multiple group members on structural stiffening concepts that included rack folks, as well as other, other members within the group. We performed FEA analysis to help to optimize the stiffening add-ons and trade-offs. Uh, and the other thing we've been dealing with quite a bit is the challenges around the need for tighter tolerances for blind mate designs versus large scale production frame tolerances. The tolerances are much larger than say what you would deal with at an, an HD gear level. Um, another big part of what we're working on here is the uh, white, white practices effort that we're doing. Um, the team is working to develop a few of them. One of them is done, as I mentioned, the manual couplings and hoses best practices white paper was published in August and provides the community an overview of various cooling types, hose and tubing construction, best practices, test methods, and regulatory standards to consider. Uh, if you guys get a chance, there'll be a link later. You should check it out. It's very, very informative. Um, and, and we're also working on a logistics and integration best practices white paper that will focus on areas such as testing, integration of gear, and shipping. So where are we at? Let's give an update of what we've done this year. Well, the blind mate quick connector initial design was locked back in the middle of summer, mid July. Uh, flow simulations have been completed by all suppliers. We have four suppliers that have manufactured proof of concept prototypes. And the parts are in house, and suppliers are testing to an agreed upon test plan that we worked out beforehand. Uh, the suppliers are targeting initial com testing completion by late this month, early December, roughly. Um, and after all that's done, uh, we're going to be starting to do some, at least some preliminary interoperability testing. And what that means is we're going to start cross mating and cross testing the different suppliers to see how they perform both mechanically and in terms of flow, flow performance. So down below there is one of the test fixtures that we're using. And it, uh, it's, it's pretty cool, and pretty complex work that we're doing in terms of those fixtures. It's neat stuff. Uh, progress on the manifolds. The initial rack attachment interfaces have been defined. The manifold level flow and structural simulations are completed. The proof of concept design was released uh, about three, four weeks ago. Um, and supplier prototypes are due in early 2021 for evaluation. 
And the modular purge and service module I mentioned earlier is under development. And that's kind of circled there in that red circle. The idea is that it comes off with a UQD and you can replace it, store it if it's damaged. So you're not stuck with something that's, um, you know, ruins the whole manifold assembly. Progress on the frame. Uh, we have the preliminary features and interfaces um, for the latest prototype in there. Uh, we've added additional stiffening members and features using FEA, as I mentioned earlier. Um, the effort is a collaboration between the frame and manifold suppliers. So it wasn't just one doing one thing. And then it was, it was very much collaborative. We helped work together on that, which was really, really, really nice to see. Uh, and then uh, the prototype fabrication of those structural enhancements are in the process and parts are due next month. So the idea is to get the racks ready for when the manifolds show up. On the IT gear side, um, we uh, froze the design in August, shortly after we froze the design on the blind mate belts and the prototype IT gear is, has been received. I did do a quick check without manifolds, at least in terms of how the ejectors worked uh, in, in the new racks and they look real good. We'll have to see with the manifolds. Uh, and then at a rack system level, the plan is we're gonna be integrating all of the components and starting testing uh, early next year. Uh, and the white papers, again, we released that and um, there's the link within, embedded in this, in this uh, presentation. You can take you right to the PDF that's on the OCP website. I, I recommend you take a look at that. The uh, logistics integration best practices white paper was kicked off in October and the target, target for rough draft is end of the year. And sometime, I would say roughly in Q1 of next year, we're going to try and complete that effort. How can you get involved? Um, well, we've got the advanced cooling solutions mailing list, as well as the cold plate work stream mailing list. And there are links in this to get involved there. There's also lots of information on all the work we're doing across all the ACS programs at the ACS week, Wiki. And in particular, the effort we, we're working on falls under Michael's area, which is the ACS cold plate. And that's the wiki link here as well in this. So um, I want to just say, you know, it's been a rough year with COVID. And I did want to mention it was, it was pretty amazing to see the team stick together and keep making progress despite all the challenges of the year. And I think that's the end of my presentation. Are there any questions? Hey, thanks, Glenn. So we do actually have a couple of questions that came through. Sure. Um, the first one. Um, is uh, asking about the IT gear. Is there any specific type of server that's planned to deploy this solution? Well, the goal of this group is to develop concepts and, and well, first of all, an interface specification, meaning where we'd like, the, where the valves need to be, the rough tolerances of the system to ensure you have a good mate, as well as we're gonna provide some ejector concepts that people can implement on their own designs um, to help them. But no, we don't have a specific uh, system at this point. Um, another question came through is, uh, I believe they're asking who are the suppliers um, for these blind mates? I think, uh, let me go back here, showed some of these here, give me a second. So we've got Sen, right? We've got Parker, we have Safeway, and we have Eaton, as far as the suppliers are involved in the, the blind mate quick connectors. Great. Thank you, Glenn. Any other questions for Glenn before we, uh, we move on? And it looks like uh, we don't have any more questions right now. So thank you very much. Um, thank you. If you can, uh, feel free to stick around. And I'm sure there may be some more questions that pop up in the chat. Sure. Um, or on the FN virtual platform as well. But uh, thank you very much for your presentation and, and thank you for the work that you're doing um, with the RV3 um, group. Sure, no problem. All right. Our next uh, presenter is uh, Timothy Marquis. 